In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. May the peace and blessings of Allah the Exalted be upon Prophet Muhammad and his purified progeny. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be with you all. In the last episode, we touched upon the point and double standards of those who, when speaking about our books, try to say that our scholars believe Ziyara is literal, or at least which the the this is what the anti-intellect channel tried to portray, and it was apparent that their point collapsed because our scholars do not take such a narration literal, and we will, inshallah, in a later episode or maybe this episode if we get down to it, show their scholars and how their scholars interpret particular narrations which would seem to give Allah some type of body or hal. So in the last episode, of course, we touched on Abu Hanifa, how he, his words contradicted what the Imam said and how his words basically indicated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a state and that he changes states. And of course, we said that they should be consistent and condemn Ibn Jawzi as someone who uttered disbelief or kufr due to narrating such a story which was based on a dream. Such khurafat. <laughs> so let's um, go to our next uh, point. For the brothers and sisters who speak English and English is their first language and they have a hard time uh, with Arabic, then Kamil Ziyarat is available in English. So these narrations, alhamdulillah, they can be found and this is the translation. And also for Kitab al-Tawheed, if the brothers and sisters want to know the true Tawheed as taught by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, then this is another copy of Kitab al-Tawheed, which is available online for purchase. So I can ask the brothers and sisters to purchase this book. What we do is that we go to the narration that Khalid al-Wasabi, the Nasabi polemicist, quoted, which is on page 227. This is, when, this is where the narration starts and it's been translated. So what we want to do first is go into the chain of narration. Now the grading of this hadith from the Rijali traditional perspective would be classed as daif. It would be classed as something that is weak and this is due to two of the narrators which is Mane bin Hajjaj um, and Yunus who are both majhul, they are both unknown in the books of Rijal so we cannot verify the veracity of their personalities and uh, when we look at the chain. However, we are not like Salafis who when they find something that they do not like, they find a particular narration, they do not like the content, we just weaken it and we completely reject this. What we are saying is that this narration in Kamil al-Ziyarat, the one that Khalid al-Wasabi is quoting, it speaks about the merits of visiting Imam Hussein alayhi salam and there is an abundance of narrations which speak about this. Therefore, due to this context, we can accept this narration and interpret it in another way. But what these um, Salafiya, they fail to realize is that we do not build solid aqidah based upon these narrations because it is not at the level of mutawatir or sahih um, or, or the authenticity. It's not at that level um, from the Rajali standards. Therefore, solid aqidah cannot, the, our theology cannot be built on such a narration. If they try to use that argument against us, we do not even need to accept this narration. But because we are not like Salafis that find something they don't like and they just reject it, we will accept it and we will say how our scholars explained such a narration. Um, so the problem that the Salafiyyah seem to have in this narration is that they try to say that it alludes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing some sort of physical ziyara to the grave of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So let us read um, the first part of the narration that was quoted by Khalid al-Wasabi. I can read it in English inshallah ta'ala that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam when he came to Hayra um, he asked me, do you go to 
the ziyara of Hussein, of um, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So the sixth Imam asked Safwan this. He said, may I sacrifice myself for you? Do you also go on his ziyara? The Imam replied, how can I not go on his ziyara when Allah goes to his ziyara every Thursday night? Allah descends to him with angels, the prophets, successors, and with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, the best of prophets and with us the best of successors. So this is one part of the hadith which I have read. But before we go into this, we've gone, we said to the chain it is da'if. But one thing the brothers and sisters should know is that our scholars do not just verify narrations merely based on the chain. Rather, we have other methods of verifying narrations because it may be that we have a hadith which is weak in the chain, but when we compare it to Quran, when we compare it to other authentic narrations or widely um, reported narrations, we can still accept this narration. Or Jabr al Hadith bi Amal al Ashab, something, a concept that we have that some of our scholars use um, for jurisprudence. For example, if there's a narration that is weak, they refer back to some of the early scholars to see if they have used this narration and whether it has given them confidence, uh, sorry, whether they have used this to give them confidence on using such a narration. So we are not like um, some that just look at a chain and say, oh, this is hadith is you know, authentic weak. We use other methods and we compare hadith with other hadith. So this is one thing to mention. Now, when people hear about the ziyara of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Anyone who is not a Salafi literalist in his understanding of Tawheed will know that you should automatically, he will know that he should do ta'wil of this statement that is not a literal statement and it cannot be a literal statement. This is one point. And certain statements, when one hears them, they know automatically they need ta'wil. Now, if we go to the dictionary of Maqayis al by Ibn Faris, also known as Ar-Razi, he has a well-known dictionary. And what he says about ziyara, because we need to get on the definition of ziyara, okay, what have some interpreted it as. He states that ziyara is defined as inclining or turning towards something and turning away from everything else. So turning towards something and turning away from every, everything else is paying attention. What you're doing is you're paying attention to something and when you go to the ziyara, you pay attention to this thing. For example, if you go to ziyara of the Imams salam, you're paying attention, you're sending blessings upon them, you are reading dua. So he defines ziyara as this. And then we have another scholar such as Ayatollah Ali Husseini Milani who uses some of the other Shia dictionaries on his website and he gives his definition of to incline and de desire towards a side and to turn away from everything else besides that thing. So ziyara is paying attention to something. So what we want to say is that an important question, what exactly is ziyara and the outcome of ziyara? And how would this apply when we apply it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about ziyara? And inshallah later on as well, uh, in the other lectures, we will also discuss what does it mean to do um, ziyara of Allah, ziyara to Rabb, for, for example. Uh, when I start ziyara, I start in a state, of course, and I start with a journey to reach somewhere. Ziyara is such a process. There are many processes I go through to become and go on this ziyara. So what we say is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we remember the previous principle, He's not got any state. So we only take what? The outcome and the end goals when we are discussing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, when I go to on ziyara, I invoke blessings on a particular place and <clears throat> I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this person or send a rahmah on them if they were a pious person. And when I make ziyara to a normal person, just a visitation, I pay attention towards him. So this is what the meaning of ziyara is. So how would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the question that arises is how would Allah give attention to Imam Hussein alayhi salam? We said the outcome of ziyara is attention. So what would this mean Allah giving his attention towards the grave of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and his holy shrine? Alama Majlisi clarified this in the narration. And as I said, Khalid al-Wasabi is very deceitful in his methods because he knows exactly what is on the very next page of 
that narration that he read because I have the Arabic copy as well. But he decides not to read it for the viewers and he tries to say, Ya Shia, Ya Uqala, <clears throat> what do you say about such a narration? Alama Majlisi, when speaking about this narration, he says, I've got it down here, inshallah, the note. Alama Majlisi. Allah going, descending to the ziyarah of Hussein alayhi salam refers to the descent of his special blessings, his rahmah, rahmah on Hussein alayhi salam. So what is the end goal of Allah paying attention towards a particular place? It is, according to Alama Majlis in this interpretation, him giving his special reverence and blessings upon Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Ya Khalid al-Wasabi, why do you not quote what our scholars say, because you want to deceive the viewers to cover up your own literalist interpretation that your scholars give of the Qur'an and of the Ahadith which we'll present later. So Allah Majlisi is very clear, he says that Allah descending the ziyarah of Hussein is giving his special blessings and as we said according to the Arabic dictionaries, ziyarah is paying attention. Does Allah pay attention like us? No. This would be that Allah gives, hires the maqam, the status of Imam Hussein and sends blessings on it. We will also look what another scholar says, Alama Amini, with regards to this narration and see how he interprets such a thing. Because remember, the anti-intellect channel, they wanted to portray that our scholars take this literal. So we show some early scholars um, who comment on this. So Alama Amini, Amini, he comments on this hadith and he says that performance of the ziyarah of Hussein by the Lord either refers to Allah directing his special providence on Hussein by descending his continuous blessings on Hussein, his continuous and exuberant blessings on Hussein. So he has the same view of Alama Majlisi on this um, matter. And then he gives a second view. He said, or it refers to the manifestation of his glory, which is referred to in the verse, but when his Lord manifested his glory to the mountain, it crumbled to a heap of dust and Musa fell unconscious. The verse, فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّ رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ It is the Allah's manifestation of his glory. Therefore, Imam Sadiq used to go to Ziyara of Hussein on Thursday nights to witness the manifestation of glory and providence of Allah on Hussein. So very clearly, we have two views, both stated by Alama Majlisi and Alama Amini, that yes, one of the views is that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this Ziyara, not literally descending down, which only a Salafi literalist would um, interpret due to his own narrations and understanding of Allah. Rather, it is the rahmah, the blessings that is sent of Imam, on Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And again, we reiterate the point that the Arabic dictionaries, some of them that we have and our scholars define this type of ziyarah as giving special attention. So this is what both of them have said and Alama Amini and I believe the Sayyid in the video that they misquoted also had the other opinion that it is Allah manifesting his divine glory in this place and that the Imam went there to witness this. So now that we have got this out of the way and we have ex explained this, um, a point I mentioned also is that we don't care and we're not interested in how the Salafiyah want to interpret our narrations because they are throwing um, stones when they live in a glass house and we will discuss what their scholars say literal to see what and we won't take any words out of context, we'll quote exactly what they say. So inshallah ta'ala we'll, we will play the next clip for the viewers to show the argument which Khalid al-Wasabi makes. Allah yazura kulli laylat yum'an yahbitu yahbitu Allah yanzul yahbitu ma'al malaika ilayhi wal anbiya wal awsiya yahbitu ma'al malaika Allah yanzil ila al-ard إلى كربلاء حسبنا الله ينزل الله من فوق عرشه إلى كربلاء كل ليلة جمعة يا أيها الشيعة يا أيها العقلاء هذه الرواية ماذا تقولون فيها؟ 
Dear viewers, welcome back. Thank you for watching the clip and staying with us. So the next part of the hadith, which he tries to create a doubt about, um, is, and he knows obviously what, as I said, the footnote, what it says on the page, he's playing dumb to the viewers, is, يَهْبِتُ مَعَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ إِلَيْ So this part, this verb, يَهْبِتُ, he uses this to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally descends. We have a similar hadith when this verb is used by Fatima to Zahra, salam Allahi alayha, peace be and blessings be upon her, where she talks about someone sending his sincere worship up to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And the verb that is used in the past tense is ahbata. The, the verb in this hadith is used in the present tense. And the context which it is used is that if someone sends up his pure worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ahbata Allahu ilayhi, it says that Allah sends down to him something that is beneficial for his state. So when we look at this, we clearly see that this verb has been used before with the context, context of Allah sending blessings on someone. So this is one point to note down and let's see what the meaning of Yahbitu is. Now we do not interpret this literal as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming down with the angels because there's another verse in the Holy Quran and we use a comparison between this verse and the hadith which would seem to give Allah a hal that he will come. So we have another verse in chapter 89 verse 22. صفن صفن. It says in this verse in the Holy Quran that Allah, he comes with the angels in ranks, for example. Some translate it in ranks, in rows. So in this verse, what we ask is that the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally come with the angels on the day of judgment. Yes, yeah, of course for some and um, especially the brothers sitting here, they know this as well. For some such as the Salafiya and for many actually of the people who refer to themselves as Ahl Sunnah, of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the Exalted on the day of judgment will be seen and there will be a literal meeting with Allah. This is what they believe. They believe they will literally meet their Lord whereas Ahlul Bayt and the Prophet peace be upon them all, defined this in another way. So when it says, Yahbitu Allah, He comes with the angels. And in this verse, when it says, the Lord comes with the angel, in, uh, your Lord will come with the angels in rank. Does it mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse will literally come in rank with the angels? No, this verse shows other, th it doesn't mean Allah will come literally. It means the angels will come and Allah, His Rahmah will come or his command will come and there are other ways that some have interpreted this but they don't take it literally unlike Salafi literalists um, would. So as I say, um, Rahmah is one of them and signs of appearance is another way to interpret this verse and glory uh, of Allah. These are the, the main things that some of the Mufassirin interpret this as. So when we say that Allah comes with the angels, we'll read the part as well for the viewers. Just like we would say in this verse of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not literally come with the angels. We can also apply this in the same hadith. There's no problem of doing that. So every first day Allah descends to him with the angels, the prophets, his successors, and Muhammad, the best of the prophets, and with us, the best of successors. So clearly here, what we say is that, again, it would be blessings. Allah doing ziyara is turning his attention towards Hussein alayhi salam, raising his maqam, sending rahmah and Allah coming with the angels is that he is giving his rahmah. This um, um, hubut is with the, sending the rahmah with the angels and the, these kinds of things. This is how we would interpret such a statement when we put it against the Holy Quran. So to sum this part of the hadith up, to, we can, as we said, the hadith was not authentic by its chain, but when we reconcile this with other hadith, when we reconcile this with the Quran, we do not take it in the literal sense, and we say that ziyara of Allah is turning his attention to Imam Hussein alayhi salam maqam raising the status, and yahbitu ma'al malaika is not a literal descent, unlike the Lord of the Salafiya who descends. Rather, it is just sending his blessings with the angels and those who visit the shrine 
of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And there's also another interpretation which is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, because anything that he says is from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, the Prophet visiting Imam Hussein alayhi salam, his shrine, this could also count as ziyara of the Lord or be the equivalent, which we will explain in the next episode. So Khalid al-Wasabi, to sum up, he attacked us because what we, he, he said about the sending of the Lord, whereas he's just dug a deeper hole for himself. Because in the next episode, we will elaborate on some points and double standards that he has towards uh, us when interpreting narrations. And as we say, we do not give the privilege of the Salafiyyah to interpret our narrations the way they would interpret their own, which is exactly what Khalid al-Wasabi is doing. So for the next episode, inshallah ta'ala, join us when we will talk about their narrations of descending. And to just uh, recap once again, the ziyara was the attention of Allah and there was yahbitu does not indicate a literal descent. So may the peace and blessings be upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and his pure progeny and we ask you, you to join us for the next episode. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajahum wa lamad.